Well, hello. My name is Mara, and welcome to Books Like Whoa. Okay, so it is my monthly What Am I Reading Right Now for the month of May 2018. I have to say, I think this is getting to be maybe my favorite video I do. I really, yeah, I really enjoy checking in with you guys about what I'm reading and what I'm planning to read next. You guys seem to like it. Like, I don't know. I've just been enjoying doing these the last couple of months. Um, I've been doing it a long time, but just particularly enjoying it the last couple of months. So anyway, so far May has been kind of an interesting reading month. So I've gotten quite a bit done. Um, and I think because I didn't have, I haven't had like buddy reads going on or like reading challenges or whatever, I've been able to sort of really come back into my mood reading um, because I've also not had like a ton of library books or a ton of arcs or anything else that I needed to get to. And I think I've kind of like gone back to do some like comfort reading and like getting through some things that have been on my TBR for a while. And I've, I think that's been good. Like I haven't had a ton of things that I've absolutely loved so far this month, but I think I'm happy that I'm kind of um, allowing myself to do just like some sort of like very like just whatever I'm in the mood to read, just go for it type reading. Um, because I think that can kind of be like my happy, my happy place as a reader. So yeah, let me tell you a little bit about some of the highlights of what I've been reading and then I'll talk about what I might read next. So one thing that I technically didn't read this month, but I read it on the 30th of April and it didn't make it into my last month's wrap up. So it will make it into this month's wrap up because oh my gosh, I enjoyed it so, so much. And that is The Ones Who Got Away by Ronnie Lauren. Now she is a romance author that I have never actually read anything from before. I kind of have always gotten the vibe that she was very like new adulty and that is not my jam. Um, new adult, side note, new adult really became a thing when I was a new adult, and I just really didn't resonate with the titles that were being released, at least at the time. I mean, now I'm 30, so I probably don't technically fall into this category anymore, but like when it was really taking off, I did, and I was like, this doesn't, like these people don't reflect me or the people I know, so I don't understand. It felt very much like, this is what the kids are doing these days, right? And I was like, not this kid, like I don't, <laughs> I don't know who you're talking to. Um, so anyway, that's a side note. So I kind of have a little bit of like trepidation around new adult titles, even though I know a lot of people really enjoy them. And there are a few that I've kind of liked, um, specifically like Christina Lauren is one that I've, I've enjoyed pretty well. Um, but anyway, all that to be being said, this particular title, I wouldn't necessarily qualify as a new adult. Maybe it is technically, I'm not sure. Um, but it didn't have that vibe to it. I loved this book. It's pro it's the best rom contemporary romance I've read in a while. And what I loved about it was that it handles its premise, which is dark, um, in a way that I thought was really interesting. And I'm really excited to see where, the where this series goes. So if you don't know, The Ones Who Got Away um, is the first, I think, in either a trilogy or like a short series about um, survivors of a high school shooting incident that happened at a prom. 10 to 15 years ago, I forget exactly what the timeline is. Um, and that is dark. Also, can we just step back and reflect? Can I, okay, I just have to say, as, somebody, as an American who has lived abroad, um, it is not, the shooting situation that we have in this country is not normal. I had a friend when I was living in Canada who was from China and she literally cannot go back to China because she's like a political, um, persona non grata. And when I was like, oh, do you want to, like, I was inviting her to come visit me. And she was like, to be honest, I just don't like really feel safe going to the U.S. because I just don't want to get shot. <sighs> she cannot go back to her own country and she's afraid to come to the U.S. because anyway. Um, so the fact that this is like a relatable and like, yeah, that's a thing premise is horrifying. But like, okay, so that little rant <laughs> over that aside, um, I thought that she did such a good job of like not fetishizing the shooting incident because I think that would have been a really easy place to go. She really focuses on how the uh, that event impacted individuals and she doesn't dwell in a way that is sort of like gross on like glorifying the event or making it like overly dramatic. Like I think there's a level of like emotional realism to how she's portraying that situation. I really appreciated. I think it took a lot of skill and a lot of like restraint on the author's part. Um, and it's a romance. So like it's a romance between two people who survived the shooting and like they were um, in the same area that night and the one of them behaved in a way 
that was really difficult <laughs> for the other person to deal with. And just generally there was a lot of like intense backstory, but somehow I didn't find this to be like an overly angsty read. And that tends to be my critique of new adult and something that I generally don't really like in contemporary romance. But I didn't, I felt like this handled that situation very seriously and it was dark in some ways, but it didn't feel melodramatic. So anyway, I really enjoyed that book and I really have a lot of respect for the author because I think this is one that could have gone left very easily. And um, she, I think, avoided some of those pitfalls. So kudos to her. I have requested an arc for the next one because I really want to read it. But if not, I'll, I'll read the next one either way. And then I kind of want to dive into her backlist because like, yeah, she definitely, like I said, this is the best contemporary romance I've read in quite some time. So um, yeah, anyway, really enjoyed The Ones Who Got Away. And then I have been reading a lot of contemporary romance just because like I said, I've been sort of in comfort read mode. And I've had like, a, there's been a lot of E TBR on my shelf that's um, contemporary romance. And I just, I wanted to get through some of it. Um, of that, I'd say there's two things that I thought were notable. Um, one is I read my first Penny Reed. Um, now, if you are a reader of romance, she is like a very popular self-published author. I did not realize she has the same sort of like crackalicious element to her that like a Kristen Ashley or a Mariana Zapata does. Like it has that same sort of like, this isn't necessarily the best written thing, but I just cannot put this down quality to it. Um, and it's cleaner, I would say, than either of those authors. So if you're somebody who doesn't like a lot of explicit sex, but like kind of like that num 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 num, just like gobble them up type um, contemporaries, you might want to give her a try. I think Neanderthal Seeks Human definitely qualifies as that. I also like that I think every, I've read three or four of her books now, every single heroine has been extremely socially awkward to the point where I would probably put them on the spectrum. Um, like if I were guessing, I think they're meant to have some level of like um, Asperger's or autism. And I think that's kind of great that she like is able to write really compelling readable books about heroines who I would say have some sort of atypical relationship with being able to socialize. So I would recommend her. I enjoyed Neanderthal Seeks Human. I know it's not for everybody and some people who don't read the heroine as having extreme social anxiety or whatever or social awkwardness are like this the heroine is too dumb she doesn't see what's going on and it's like I think that's purposeful on the author's part so it didn't bother me anyway I really enjoyed that one and then oh I read Making Up by Lucy Parker I got an arc of it which was great it is so so good she writes such good contemporary romance it's not um I didn't enjoy it as much as um act like it I think that one was just like a fantastic book and it was a debut like Good job, Lucy Parker. But Lucy Parker just writes contemporaries I like to read. It's not, again, it's another one that I would say is not super heavy on like explicit sex. So if that's something you're not into, she's definitely someone safe to go to. I like that she's essentially writing in the category link. Like I think these are maybe even technically category books, but they're really high quality. All of them are set in the West End theater scene in London. And I think she finds like unique conflicts from that. Um, this particular one is between an aerial performer, like kind of Cirque du Soleil type performer, and a special effects makeup artist, think face off, that's what I was thinking. And yeah, I just thought it was a really, it's a second chance romance, which aren't always my favorite, but I really enjoyed this particular one, um, because the, set, the first time they were together was when they were teenagers, so that's easier to sell to me. Um, yeah, I just thought it was really good. Lucy Parker is a really good writer too. I think she writes really nicely and she always has interesting family dynamics in her books. And I really, I personally really enjoy that. So yeah, I had a couple of really good contemporary finds this time and it's, I've not read a lot of that this year. So it was good to sort of get back to some of my like comfort reads and find a few things that I think were really pretty high quality. A couple other things that I read and enjoyed um, to varying degrees and for varying reasons. So none of these were like, amazing, but all these were enjoyable. So the first was um, Amanda Ventures from the Naughty Librarian sent me a signed copy of The uh, Kiss of Night by Sherilyn Kenyon, which is very sweet of her. I appreciate her thinking of me. This is my first Sherilyn Kenyon, and she is a paranormal romance author. Um, I would say this is too angsty for my taste in paranormal romance, but I read this on the day that I was at the height of PMSing, and so I had a good cry, and it was very <laughs> and I really enjoyed it. So this isn't someone I think I'm going to put in my regular rotation, but like I would definitely read something from her again, especially when I'm in the mood for more angst than I like in paranormal romance, but not a ton of angst, if that makes sense. I'm somebody who likes them to be pretty light and silly, and this isn't quite that, but I thought this was like a nice, not super angsty, but like 
also not super light paranormal romance. So like, yeah, I'm glad to know that she is somebody I could enjoy reading more from. And again, it was sweet of Amanda to send this to me. Then I read The Queen's Rising, which was not as good as I'd hoped it would be because I, this was on my most anticipated books of the year list. Um, and the premise of this was really intriguing to me, which is essentially a girl goes to like, magic school doesn't get picked by a patron, but then gets picked by another patron later and like has a secret like role in a revolution type thing. The problem I have with this book is that it takes way too long to get to the part that sold me in the copy. Like what I was interested in reading about, it takes like almost 150 pages to get to that. And I almost DNF this book because I was not that interested um, in the school part, which is unusual. I usually really like that, but I wasn't that interested in that this time. Um, so I actually, whenever I think I might give up, I kind of, I pick a chunk in the middle and I was like, oh, okay, this does get interesting. So I stuck with it. And I'm really glad I did because I ultimately did really end up enjoying this book. I will say, I'll get more into this in my monthly wrap up because I think I'm gonna put this as a surprise. I will say that I don't know where the series is going. Like the ending of this book feels like an ending. So I may just read this as a standalone, even though I think there's technically a sequel. So anyway, um, this was a surprise to me and I, I think I ended up giving this four stars. I really, I did ultimately end up enjoying this, but just know it's really slow getting started. And like I said, I don't really know how I feel about this as a series, but as a standalone, it was enjoyable. And then I finished catching up on the Wayward Children series by Shauna McGuire um, with Beneath the Sugar Sky. Now I'll say that I, I don't quite know how to think about this book because the parts, so my favorite still is Every Harder Doorway, which is the first one. The second one, I think the parts I liked in the second one, I liked more than I liked what anything that happened in this book. So like when they're actually in the magical world in the second one, I liked that better than the stuff in this. That being said, I think this works much better as a book. So it was a more consistent read. So I gave Every Harder Doorway three stars, or sorry, I gave um, Down Among the Six and Bones three stars. I gave this 3.5 just because I think it's more cohesive as a book. Um, I didn't like either of them as much as Every Heart of Door Doorway. But that being said, I'm still really intrigued by this world. I really like Cade, so I'm glad we got more from him in this book. Um, I really want Cora and um, Skeleton Boy, whatever his name is, Chris, I think. Yeah, I want, I want um, Cora and Chris to get together. I want him to get over his skeleton princess and get with Cora because I think they're cute together. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed this book. It wasn't as good as the first one, but I'm definitely gonna keep going in the series because I really, I do enjoy this world and I really like the whole like way that she's playing with portal fantasy. Okay, so in terms of things that I might read next, I'm definitely gonna read uh, Sorry to Disrupt the Peace by Patty Yumi Cottrell this week because I have a book club about it next week. I'm not that jazzed for this to be honest but it was the pick and so yeah that's part of being in a book club is you read a book you might not normally read it's like a domestic literary novel and sometimes I really like those a lot of times I don't so we'll see how this goes but I, I need to read that for book club then I think I'd like to get to the next in death book I've not read any of that this month and I've been roughly reading one a month um, since I started the series so yeah we'll see if I get time to get to this you guys know how I feel about the series it's I'm kind of a broken record at this point point. and then next month there is a new side changeling series book coming out so I really I've been literally been saying this since I started my channel I need to catch up with the series because I pre-ordered the next one and like I just can't like the money situation I'm like you cannot be ordering brand new hardbacks and just letting them sit there for years that is absurd so I need to read this one I really would like to read that this month and then I want to read um, the there's one other one I need to read Silver Silence to catch up so that way hopefully when Ocean Light comes out at the end of next month I will be ready and then I started this book and never finished it and I kind of just want to like power through and finish it so hopefully I will get the myself together to do that because like I just wanna get this off of my TBR, to be honest with you. And then really anything else I get to this month will probably be things that I get from the library. I am approaching the top of the list for a number of different titles. So like, just depends on the timing and when I get what, um, but I might read another Simone St. James if I get that um, on audio. I'm in line on the new Nora Roberts that's coming out at the end of the month. Um, I am in line on Red Rising because I messed up the last time I had it out and forgot what the due date was. So in line on Red Rising. I'm in line for Undead Girl Gang, which I really want to read. And in general, I'm in line for several YA mysteries because I've been really in the mood to read that. Like I've had really good luck with YA mystery in the last year. So I want to like, I've gotten together some titles that I think fit what I like about that. And I'm trying to do 
read a bunch of those so that I can do a video for you guys recommending some YA mysteries because I think they're kind of a nice like if you like mystery but you get a little tired of them being overly gory or if you just like mysteries with young protagonists which I think is more my thing like I really like school ones and whatever so anyway um, I'm in line on Undead Girl Gang and a few other ones whose names are all super similar so I can never remember what they're called <laughs> um, like We Were Liars is one I'm online for um, a few so anyway hopefully I will be getting some of those but yeah yeah, anyway, so we'll just see what I get from the library and that probably will determine, aside from those few books I showed you, what I end up reading next. But yeah, it's been a pretty good reading month so far. I wouldn't say there's a ton of highs, but there's no, there's not really been any big lows either. So um, yeah, I think I've been kind of, like I said, I think I've been in sort of like a comfort mood, um, comfort read type mood and kind of getting into like my safety zone. Um, so this isn't a month I think where I'm pushing myself a lot in terms of what I'm reading, but that's good. I think it's good to kind of give yourself some palate cleansers and kind of have highs and lows in terms of like stretching yourself versus um, something that's a little safer. So yeah, anyway, I think that that will do it for this month's What I'm Reading Right Now. Um, as always, I like to hear what you guys are reading right now and any thoughts you may have on any of the books I mentioned. So definitely let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and side note, I am getting so close to a thousand subscribers and it makes me emotional and I'm so excited. Like, I hope I can get there before my booktube anniversary because I just think that'd be really fun. That's at the beginning of July. So like, keep your fingers crossed. I'd love to get there. It's, that's just a really big milestone on YouTube is to get to a thousand. So like, I'm excited to maybe be able to get there. So anyway, side note, if you're not subscribed, I would love it if you would because I'm really close to that goal. Um, but you know, whatever. You're welcome here regardless. So anyway, like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below, and I think that will do it. I hope you guys are having a really great day. I hope you're having a really great reading month, and I will just talk to you soon. Bye!